Some people like to see the world burn. And if you are a studio head at Spyglass, somehow you forgot that you're not fireproof. Now while the fate of Scream 7 hangs in the balance, so does the Scream franchise and the near three decades of story that's been laid out. Originally, I had scrapped this video after news broke about Melissa, and while we may never get a conclusion to this story, you asked me to still cover the list of suspects. So here are five possible leaders of the Ghostface cult that we will never, or maybe one day, see come to the big screen. Richie Kirch. We have to finish the movie. Who gives a fuck about movies? Now, if the franchise were to be rebooted without the legacy characters and Spyglass wanted to keep some connections to the past, Richie would be a safe and quite possibly the worst choice due to his limited connection to Sydney and the other legacy characters. Outside of Sydney, Gale, and Dewey, there are no links to anyone else prior to Scream 5. Scream 5 established the groundwork for the cult with disgruntled Stab franchise fans gathering on Reddit to vent about the franchise and also share ideas on how they would do it better. Richie feels that the lack of source material has caused the Stab franchise to become a joke. Because we love something, we're just a fucking joke to them. How can fandom be toxic? It's about love. They don't fucking understand these movies are important to people. Richie. And we're gonna help them. Hollywood's totally fucking out of ideas, so we decided we'd give them some new source material to follow, you know? Bring it back to basics. Because that's how you make a great stab movie, Sam. When confronted, Amber reveals that she was radicalized, and it is safe to say that it was Richie who did this. Just like Jason, just like Greg. One would have to assume that they were not the only stupid people to believe the ramblings of an idiot. Just look at social media today. In part 6, we learn that Richie's obsession expands beyond the stab films with the unveiling of the ghost face shrine and seeing his home movies were reenactments of the Woodsboro murders. And not only has Richie become a martyr in his little dark web community, he has also become the star in Gale's new book and possible true crime series, meaning that creating new source material for Stab is no longer the goal. Creating content for the true crime TV show and podcast is what the cult could evolve into in the Scream universe, their own version of the smiley face killers. Christina Carpenter. The question on many fans' minds is who and where is Christina Carpenter? Is she one of the girls Billy is talking to in the video store? Is she the girl sitting on the couch at the party? Or is she the girl who passes by Sydney and Billy in the hall in the first film whose name happens to be Chris? We can only theorize around her involvement in the original murders, and we will delve into that and what her role would be in Scream 7 in a future episode where we talk about the five lost Scream sequels, so stay tuned. Christina's involvement in the latest string of Ghostface murders could have stemmed from Sam leading to the destruction of her marriage and eventually her family as we learned in 6. One has to ask, what other dark secrets were in her diaries? Maybe a confession? Maybe a heartbroken Sam stopped reading the diary when she learned the truth about Billy being her father, before she could learn about her mother's involvement in Maureen's death. But Christina didn't know that and feared for the worst. After all, Sam asked, Biggest problem with the Stab movies is, there's no Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. No bad guy to keep coming back. But the illegitimate daughter of the original mastermind? <sighs> now that's a fucking villain. How did you know? 
Oh, about your father? I mean, it's a small town and your mom's a drunk. How else would it have anyone else known that Sam was Billy's daughter unless they had direct knowledge from that period in time? If Stu is not alive, then it can only be one of two people, Sam or Christina. Maybe Sam did not inherit the mental instability from Billy, but from Christina. And the loss of her family caused her to crack. Sam being framed for the murders wasn't about revenge, it was about legacy. Billy's legacy. Roman Bridger. This is the last dead person on the list. For some, Scream 3 is one of the best films in the franchise. For me, it's the worst. But it could easily become the most important film in the franchise with some solid writing in revealing that Roman's legacy lives on in the cult. In part 3, he revealed that he has been the man operating in the shadows from the beginning, radicalizing Billy in part 1, when he revealed to Billy that his father was sleeping with Sydney's mother. And then... They crafted a plan to seek revenge and for Billy to have a scapegoat. Now in part two, we learn of the online community and it is safe to conclude with Roman having the capabilities to track down people, he would have found Mrs. Loomis as well. We're in this together? Yeah, well, had to have financing. Tuition's expensive. Deb there, my backer, we met on the internet, psycho website, classifieds. There's only an estimated 97 active serial killers in the country today, so Mickey here was quite a find. Definitely one on the way up. Let's face it, the internet was far less safer than it is today, if you can believe that. In Scream 3, not only did Roman reveal to Sydney his motive for targeting her, he also revealed that he knew what Sunrise Studios had did to their mother before killing John Milton. Roman's thirst for revenge expanded beyond Sydney as he was likely the person behind the Sunrise Sucks website. For those not in the know, when Scream 3 released, there was three promotional websites that came with it, expanding upon the Scream universe story, and someone was acting as a whistleblower for Sunrise Studios, revealing their scandals, their dark history, and all the accidental deaths that occurred during the studio's history. This was thought not to be canon, but in Scream 6, in the case for Gail with all her books, we see the book stabbed in the back, the real Sunrise story. Stumacher, before you yell at me in the comments that I said no more dead people on this list, and ask why am I talking about Stu, this only applies if you are on the stew train and believe he is alive. Me, I've purchased my ticket. To save some time, I will do a quick recap. The original trilogy was written with the intention for Stu being the cult leader. We have discussed how Stu would have survived the TV falling on his head, and we did a six-part series revealing all of the Stu's clues that would point to him being alive in the follow-up five films. While Scream fans are divided over Stu, with more of the fan base leaning towards him being alive and coming back, this works best if Sydney returns. And if not, Tara being his daughter or the death of Vince could also serve as motives for his return. Outside of the Scream universe and knowing how greedy Spyglass is, taking advantage of Matthew Lillard's recent return to horror would generate a lot of buzz and could possibly save Scream 7 from bombing at the box office. Regardless of the motive for his return, pitting him against Gail or Kirby would still work. Gail Weathers While Stu is something I love to see happen, Gail being the leader of the cult would be the most shocking and potentially the most satisfying reveal of them all. We previously covered the details and clues behind Gail being behind the cult, as she has the most motive out of all of the characters in the franchise. It's simple, money and fame have been Gail's main motivation, 
and as it slipped away from her, she tends to fall into a depression. Even more so as Sydney has become the star of the story, leaving her behind. Not only has Gail admitted to it being all her fault. If I hadn't written that book about your mother, none of this would have happened. Gail. I started all of this. No, you didn't. But after swearing off writing more books, she did the opposite and wrote another scandalous book, seeing how she could profit from it just as she's done with every murder in the past. Over the course of every film, Gal has always seemed to have an edge in unraveling the story over everyone else. And if this was because of good journalism, why was she not able to replicate that success with other true crime stories? The clues are all there. I fucking idea what to write. <sighs> so, do you agree with our list of suspects, or do you have a suspect that didn't make the list? Let us know by dropping it in the comments. And, if there is any stories like Gail yeah, Weathers that you would like to see expanded on on the Popcorn Theory, let us know by dropping that in the comments as well. Don't forget to like this video, and if you're not subscribed, please do so. You don't have to hit that notification because just like the Motel 8, we'll leave the light on for you. And as always, we appreciate you for watching. Thank you and see you on the next.